We're celebrating 15 years of this beloved foolery. You know the difference between Jeff and Jeremy and a U.S. savings bond? One of them eventually matures and earns money. (laughs) (laughs) Jeff and Jeremy in the morning on 93.3 KZOZ. I ran across something really cool yesterday. It was an email, and they wanted us to talk about it, so I'm going to talk about it. Who wants us to talk I, about it? Oh, um, what was the name of the publication? That would probably oh, it was be some useful, publisher or useful pub- in this one. In this one, um, it is famous people. Famous people. Um, dot io. I don't know what the io is. Okay, but that's what it is. It was. So what they did is they pulled people in at each state. And they asked them who the most famous resident of their state was. Now, the only caveat, the only qualifier had to be that they had to uh, basically be born and grow up in the state. Okay, right? that's yeah, tough in California. The, the favorite son or daughter of said state. And California is a tough one because there's so many famous people that come from California. But a lot of those people arrive here. They come here to seek fame. So... Uh, the name is going to blow you away. You're not going to. You're not going to believe what the name was that that uh, topped the list in California. I give you five guesses. You wouldn't get. You wouldn't be able to guess who it was. Yeah, probably not. But I'll tell you who I think it should be, and it should be Ronald Reagan. Uh, Ronald Reagan was he born in California? I think he was. I think he was. I'd have to look that up. But I mean, I know he lived here. He was. He was a uh, congressman, senator. Uh, Ronald uh, Reagan. He's buried here. He's a president. He's an actor. Um, and if he's not... I ah, he was born in Illinois, bro. Tampico, Illinois. But he died here. Doesn't he get something for that? that no, the, the, the caveat to this one... Needs well, how to do you know where like, people are born? The favorite, the favorite uh, son or daughter of that state. Okay. Um, so you don't know where... Yeah, you don't know where they're born. You don't okay, know so this is, this is pretty tough. There's, this is sad because there's like a top five for almost every state except for Idaho. Idaho, it, they, only get, they only do three... And it's not a strong three, I'll tell you that much right now. It's not a strong three at all. So they just have to be born in Idaho. They don't have to actually live there or California. They just have to be born in the state. Born and do some living there. I'm sorry, North Dakota only got three as well. So North Dakota and Idaho. South Dakota, four. (laughs) Vermont's got four. Okay. Wyoming's only got two. <laughs> you want to know the most famous person to hail from Wyoming? According to Wyoming residents, when asked, who's the most famous person to, to hail from your state that was born here? From Wyoming? Wyoming. I have no idea. I'm not going to be able to nail any Not of that these. many people live in Wyoming. Yeah. Dana Perino. You know who Dana Perino is? Yes, Dana Perino is a news person, right? Yeah, she was press secretary for um, for yeah. George W. Okay, yes, Bush, and now and she's on Fox she's, News. She works on Fox News. Yeah. Okay. Um. So that's that's it. George oh, W. Is, is, uh, speaking of George W., we're going to connect the dots here. Well, he's Texas. Texas he's Texas. Nope. Nope. He's not. Bullloney. Are you kidding he's Connecticut. me? Connecticut. He's Connecticut. Really? Son of. And he's number one uh, in Connecticut. Son of a politician. Number one most famous person in Connecticut. You want to know? Are we talking about junior or senior? By the way, you're talking about junior, right? George W. George W. Yeah, it's I, I think he's junior. the third. But yeah, I know what you're talking. I know what you're talking. Whatever, whatever, whatever. Yeah. These are the people he beat out as most famous resident from Connecticut. This is kind of astonishing, actually. Meg Ryan, Michael Bolton, Glenn Close, and Seth MacFarlane. That's pretty good. That's pretty good company, yeah, right? But, do you mean, want to know about your home state? Washington State. Uh, yes, I do. Is it man or a woman? Hmm, interesting. Very interesting. It's a man. All five top spots are held by men in Washington State. What okay. a misogynist state that it, state is. Okay, is it an actor now or we is know it a politician? Why they overcompensate or, with their liberal uh, agendas. Is it a musician? Uh, what kind of celebrity are we talking about here? See if I can guess. <laughs> oh, I love how you narrow it down. Is it a musician? <laughs> <laughs> is it a musician? I will say musicians own two of the top spots, top is, five spots. Is number one a musician? Because if it is, I would guess Kenny. I, the, G. I gave I I gave you your I gave you Kenny your, G. Your Kenny hit. G. Kenny G. Came in number two. two. Oh God! 
See. So there's a more famous sure musician from Washington fingers. State than Kenny G. No, it's not a musician. I oh. didn't say it was a musician. Oh, okay. What is what is their celebrity status? In? What Kenny Loggins came in number four. I had no idea he was born in Washington. Oh. Your favorite, Kenny Loggins. Both, both the most famous Kennys in music <laughs> were born in Washington. <laughs> Who's the other Kenny? Glenn Beck operate uh, 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 has the top, the fifth spot. Okay, he's a he's a political. Host, TV, radio. Pundit, analysis. Yeah, he's got a radio network show. Owner. I don't think, they, yeah. yeah, I think he's on like. He owns his own network. Yeah. Bob Barker. I did not know Bob. Bobby B was uh, from Washington State. Bobby B uh, come as number three. Number one. Number one. You're going so fast. Hold on a second. All right. The price is wrong, oh. bitch. Never mind. Yeah, the price Bobby B. That's, that's not Bob. That's Adam. That's okay. That's okay. But he, number one. This I'm kind of surprised. I'm not surprised. I think he's the number one villain in the world. Wait, wait, wait. Which state are we in? Still in Washington? Washington. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. If sorry, I said number one villain in the world, what would you say? I would say our, our governor in California. <laughs> but he, he Gavin looks Newsom wasn't apart. born. Gavin Newsom wasn't born in Washington. I don't and know where he's he was, from. I don't he, know where he's he from. He would lie about it. He would lie about it. He would say, <laughs> I wasn't born in Washington. Bill Gates. Bill Gates, number one. Most famous person to come from Washington. Let's go to oh. California real quick. Here. Yeah, let's go, let's, uh, let's go to California. Come on, let's get down here. All right, so this is... Three uh, guesses. Most famous uh, son. I'll even narrow it down by 50%. Most famous son to come from California. Well, I already told you I thought it was Ronald Reagan, but he was not from... He's not from... He's from California. Illinois. Uh, okay, the, what do you mean son? Uh, what does that even mean? Son. Oh, California's favorite son. He was born here. Oh, that's, oh, what, okay. that's what that means. Is he an actor, musician? I have no idea. I'm sorry. I'm. It's early. I'm drawing blanks. He's an actor. He's an actor. Okay. All right. Fred Astaire. Uh, a, He's a dancer, actor. <laughs> Fred Astaire. Uh, no, it's That's not Fred Astaire. Num- I don't know where Fred Astaire is asking people from. this question in the last couple of weeks, okay? Um, <laughs> Tony Robbins. I don't know. I have, these are terrible guesses. Uh, yes. Of all the famous people. Is he alive or dead right now? He's alive. Come on. Help me out. Uh, Tony Danza. <laughs> he likes to name his kids after <laughs> Superman. Oh, uh, he does. Yeah. Dax Shepard. No, I don't Nick know. Cage. Nicholas Cage is number one. God. This is the people he be- beat out. Okay, this is interesting. Will Ferrell came in at number two. Kim Kardashian came in at number three. Katy Perry number four. Angelina Jolie number five. Most famous people. To be born oh. in California and hail from See, I California. Think, I think uh, Miss uh, Kardashian might be more famous. Maybe not more popular, but definitely more well, famous. I, She's listen, they the could world. pile the data, man. They, they, I, I, I'm not going to argue with you on this yeah. one. Nick Cage, man. It's, it's Nikki. Nikki Cage. All right. How about uh, you want to do one more? What, another state? You yeah. want another state? Yeah. Where does everybody from California go? Arizona? Let's do Arizona. Who's who's the most famous uh, person to come out of Arizona? By the Your way, hint is she's an actress. Idaho is the guy that played opposite of what's his face in that movie about drugs and meth. Nope. Breaking Bad. It's not. It's not. It's uh, Sarah Palin. Sarah Palin's Idaho. Oh, is she number one. Okay, yeah. I just had a list here, and it was his picture that came up as yeah. the most famous person. But I do well, see Sarah they Palin. Need to, on there. Google needs to refresh their their data. Because Breaking Bad people, was a, the IO, Warren Bora. Uh, did actual, actual actual research on this one. William Bora, I think, is his name. Actress, you like this actress um, a lot. Uh, Arizona, um, okay. She's in her probably thirties. I don't know. I'd have to look up her age, but I'm sure. I'm sure she's in her thirties. She's an actress in her thirties. Boy, that narrows it down. Great job, Jeff. What does she look like? Does she have brown hair or blonde hair? Neither. Mm. <laughs> she's a redhead she's 34 she's 34 she's a redhead from california yes. i mean from arizona yes. from in, arizona was she in the scarlet letter she's born in scottsdale yes wait uh i don't know if she was I, I don't know that i'm not familiar with that movie she was an easy a yes yeah the, what's her face um uh what's her name her name is um Emma Stone. Really? Yes. Yes. Emma Stone. Emma Stone is the most popular person to come from Arizona. 
according to famouspeople.io. Why don't you share this I'm on Facebook? Actually, yeah, uh, I'm going to share this over on Facebook because people, especially being in California, you guys hail from, you guys come from everywhere. So you want to know who the most famous person is in your home state. Yeah. Um, and my apologies if you come from Idaho. Spending four hours in a box together every day can make you say crazy things. <laughs> Jeff and Jeremy in the morning. All right, so is there a movie out there that everybody's talking about or that it's everybody's always talked about that you thought was just way overhyped? Like people are just I got yeah, Barbie. I, Barbie, yeah. Okay. Just talked about this. Things that people are into that you don't get. Very quick answer on that one. Barbie. Yeah. That's it. Another movie that's overhyped all time. Anchorman. Not as funny as it's portrayed by the people that like Anchorman. Have you seen Anchorman? I've seen Anchorman. Yeah, it's real silly, stupid humor. That's for sure. Um, the ones that uh, um, that made this list. Uh, In fact, Anchorman makes me very skeptical towards all Will Ferrell movies. Oh, you and know, I like I like Talladega Nights. Yeah, yeah, you would like Step Brothers. Step Brothers and Talladega Nights. I mean, they they they, they live in the same pond. But you like Anchorman, so I can't consider yeah, you I liked a reputable Anchorman source when for it that. Came out. When it you came like out, Anchorman. I haven't seen it. You like since Anchorman, it came out. and you like Step Brothers. Uh, yes, but how many it, times have you seen Step Brothers? Oh, twenty plus. How many times have you seen Anchorman? One time. Okay, well then. That, that is that is a, 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 an and we're talking 2004. This movie's almost 20 years old. I mean, let's face it; it's 20 years old. No, let's not it, remind the people around that surround Anchorman that it is because they still tout it as one of the greatest movies of all time. When it really fell sh- well short of that. Um, this this uh, website ScreenRant.com they you know list movies and things like that, and they were talking about movies that were way overrated. Uh, or overhyped for me, Forrest Gump. Um, Forrest Gump's okay, but it's just like I don't. People talk like it's the greatest movie ever made. Never agreed with that. I liked Forrest Gump. I thought it was a good movie, but it was long. It was a little longer than it needed to be. Um, I want to get back to Anchorman for just a second. Go ahead. The reason why the reason why Anchorman is so overrated is media bias. Because media by media people will talk about Anchorman as if it's the greatest thing. Everybody in media, it doesn't matter what kind of media you're in, unless you're like run a blog or something like that. But the the people that actually go on to get paid by by companies to do media jobs, especially news jobs, love Anchorman, and they always talk about it in such a in such a, a glowing fashion because. They think it's about them and it's poking fun at the industry that they're in. But you have access to these people all the time. It's not like like there's a movie that is uh, made about uh, making widgets in a in a factory in in Ohio, and it's the greatest movie ever. Like the people that make the widgets in the factory in Ohio, they probably would love that movie. But you would never hear about it because you don't have the talking heads shoving it down your throat that's why anchorman's overrated sorry i had to go on a rant um avatars on this list i've never seen it i have no interest i'm not into sci-fi and i i've never seen avatar either i'm I'm sure somebody could call up right the ride at disney world and tell me why that's a good ride i'm sure it's a great ride movie i don't know two hours wait time on that ride jesus two hours to wait for a ride that is Four minutes. Silence of the Lambs is on this list. I think it's a great movie. I mean, hell. Silence of the Lambs is a good movie. It's scary. It still scares the crap out of me. Yeah, it's a good, really good movie. Silence of the Lambs was. But a uh, great Star movie. Wars is on here. The, specifically, Episode Six: Return of the Jedi. But for okay, me, about- all Star Wars, all Star Wars. I don't get it. I watch them and I get bored, and I'm like, I got to turn it off. I've tried. I've tried with the kids. I'm like, hey, kids, you guys want to watch Star Wars? This is something kids are supposed to like. They're bored to death. And then they're like, hey, we want out, man. We want, we want out. Can we watch some Avengers movies? <laughs> uh, you can weigh in 805-543-3693. Text it in, would you? Just a movie that everybody's into that you just never got into. Overhyped. And let's do underhyped movies, too. I'm sure there's a lot of underhyped movies out there. Like, for my money, one of the greatest movies ever made was Oliver Stone's The Doors. 
And I don't think it gets the respect that it should have gotten for Val Kilmer's performance as as Jim Morrison. It was pretty impre- incredible. What you know, they were able I've, to I've do never made it through that. that whole thing because every time I try to watch it, I've been drinking and uh, just I fall asleep. <laughs> it's a good movie. Uh, I fall asleep. It's an excellent every, movie. Every single time. 805-543-3693 are the numbers to get through uh, right now. Uh, underrated movies are good. I'm trying to think what would be the most. I, that would that would take Step Brothers. I think your 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 nod would be Step Brothers. I, I know like because Step a Brothers. lot of people love Step Brothers. Right, well, I mean, it's a cult. It's got a cult following, but I don't think it's mainstream popular like all those movies you just listed off, like Return of the Jedi and Anchorman. Even Anchorman, for that matter, Anchorman is more popular in the mainstream than Step Brothers. Ooh, I don't know about that. It is. It really is. In your circles, it may not be, but it really is. Big Lebowski, probably more popular in the mainstream than Step Brothers. Oh, uh, well, Big Lebowski's great. I mean, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, here, let's see. This is tough. Which, which, which movie's funnier? Big Lebowski or Step Brothers? Yeah. Mm, I think I laughed harder at Step Brothers. Okay. Big You've Lebowski is just a classic, though. <laughs> I've seen them both over seen... 20 times. I've seen okay. them both over 20 times. 805-543-3693. I can't watch a movie 20 times. I think the most I've ever watched a movie is... Four times, five times. I've got a list of movies I want to watch. Uh, I love comedies, and I've never saw The Jerk, and I'm gonna. I have to watch that. I guess it's on Netflix right now. Recently saw Airplane for the first time. I told you about that. That was that was great. So, yeah, so Airplane's great. a good movie. Airplane's a great movie. And uh, what's the other one that I saw recently that was pretty funny? I didn't finish it, but it was just it was kind of silly for the seventies, eighties, um, with Richard Pryor and um, Gene Wilder, Silver Streak. No, no. Okay. Richard Richard Pryor was actually a writer on the movie. He's not in it. Um, it's the it's the one that's real um, racist. What? What's wrong, Joe? No, I'm trying to, real uh, real racist. I, I, it's very racist. But Richard Pryor wrote all the jokes about black people and oh, blazing people. saddles, blazing saddles. Yeah. In I mean, there's. It's like, I've never seen. Blazing I can't Saddles. believe that was in theaters. That's like I've never seen Blazing yeah. Saddles. Don't watch that if you're offended by racist comments, even though they were written by a black man. Eight oh five five four three thirty six ninety three. You can um, weigh in any time. Careful, you don't want to learn from this. Jeff and Jeremy in the morning on ninety three point three KZOZ. Okay, so a list of the uh, CEOs that make the most money came out. What sector do you think? CEOs hauled in four billion dollars in salary. Is this year. is this the t- is this the top then? This is the one. This is one industry. Financial, maybe mm. being investing, banking, somewhere up in there. I would imagine. Then I would say software was second. What, what's your third choice? <laughs> what, did I I'm miss them? Did I miss on both? I'm trying to make you a winner here. At least you could take home the bronze. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if this is the largest. They just took $4 billion. CEOs from the, that work in this industry took home collectively $4 billion in salary. Something, well, a good something to do with medical, then, would be my next Yes, question. there you go. You nailed it. Pharmaceutical. Moderna CEO. Oh, yeah. <laughs> salary last year. Her name is Steph, Stephane, or I don't know if it's a boy or a girl. Stephane Bansell. Okay. Three hundred and ninety-four million dollars. That's your that's your take. Damn. I want that negotiator for my salary. If you're friends like, with Stefane, can you just say, hey man, give me give me a hundred thousand dollars. Come on. I know you're just carrying it around in your pocket. That dude takes home in a year what a lot of people run out and buy Powerball tickets for. Okay? Exactly. <laughs> that guy carries around in his pocket what most people want to make in a year. Weirdly enough, the uh, Pfizer guys didn't show up on the top five. Oh, there's a reason for that. Why is that? Well, cover up. Oh, oh, because the the. Oh, I got it. I got you. Yeah, <laughs> there's probably advertising bot on the website called Stat <laughs> for, for Pfizer. Very good point, Jeremy. Very good point. Hey, let's go ahead and publish Moderna, but let's leave both Pfizer out of it. Viva Systems, whatever that is. His name's Peter Gassner. He came in second at three hundred and eight million. See, nobody ever goes for number two. They always go for number one, right? Moderna. That's why Pfizer dude was like, "Hey, leave my name off that list. Get my name out your mouth." Mm-hmm. But that's where all the money lies, right? Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. That's where all the money lies. That's software, by the way, Viva Systems. So I was close. Uh, they d- developed software for global life science industries. Oh, okay. They do innovation. Uh, I'm applying for a job right now. Well, I'm sure software is up there too. Don't oh, get software's me wrong. Gotta be, yeah. software, I, I just said four billion. I, I, I don't know if four billion is the largest number or if it's the tenth largest number of as far as CEO that um, uh, work in the sector what they make. Um, Regeneron. That dude lost four hundred and forty six million dollars in salary. His salary went down four hundred and forty six million dollars last year because Regeneron uh, didn't do didn't do what they were hoping that it would do with the old pandemic stuff. Very crazy stuff. That amount of money, Jeremy, could buy Costco memberships for more than sixty six million people. Okay. So if you want to put that money to good, that's how you would, when you become president, that's what you're going to do. That's who, that's your, the platform that you're going to run on. When I become president, I'm going to take all the CEOs salaries and I'm going to allocate it towards Costco memberships for all of America. No, I am not going to do that. I don't want the <laughs> filthy animals in there. Get out of my way. This is a VIP experience being able to go to Costco. There's a reason yeah, the, the, there's a reason the there's a membership. Gonna ask Not everybody's how you, invited. How do you expect to supply all those samples for 66 million new Costco uh, members? And you're going to be like, uh, 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 no comment. <laughs> yeah. Jeff and Jeremy in the morning on 93.3 KZOZ. How long have we been saying we don't do delivery? And why don't we do delivery, Jeremy? Because I don't want some dirty person touching it. It's smoking a cigarette in his car, doesn't wash his hands, handing me my food, and I number that's number one. Number two, I don't want my food to be cold. The warm food thing is is the what biggest was, motivator for me, and then price is is the the second motivator okay. for me. Um, and I don't want to. And plus, I feel I feel dirty myself when I get when I get delivery. When I get delivery, I'm like God. I can't believe I was so lazy that I had to have somebody else bring me my food to my door. I couldn't have just gone and got it myself. It's funny. I feel that same way except for about groceries because I don't like going to the grocery store. So I'm cool with ordering a bunch of stuff online and it gets dropped off at my front door. Well, that, that actually is a time saver. When you're going and ordering one thing like a pizza, you can go and pick it up. Yourself. Yeah, I always pick up my own pizza. Customers are avoiding delivery fees in favor of dining in or picking up their own food. That's what a new research has shown. They um, looked at the delivery sales, and I don't know what two of these restaurants are, but Chipotle, Cava, and Sweet Green. Their delivery sales have dropped nationwide, and they say fees and tips are to blame for it. People don't want to spend the extra money if they don't have to. They'll just go ahead and go out and get it themselves. Um, you know, we, with all these different fees and these tips and you know all what the these greatest things? new thing is? And I didn't realize this, but it's called curbside pickup. So you don't even have to get out of your car anymore. Right. This is uh, probably a thank you to COVID. I, I wanted Subway the other day, and I'm like, yeah, I don't feel like going in there. So Charlene's like, oh, I'll just order it on my phone here. It's just like when we do um, Chipotle. Do you, do you Except, tip the uh, curbside pickup people? No. So, um, oh my God, they walked out the door and handed it to me, okay? You could have walked in the door and... and they got, don't want you to. They say, stay in your car. No, they, we're not. Yes, it it's does. Not, it's not 2020, bro. It's they not say, stay in your car yeah. on the app. Do you, put on, do you put on a fake mask as well no. to like kind of sell, no, I'm just sell saying, the whole, like, I'm a lazy ass. You need to bring out my food. On the app, then, it says, would you like delivery or curbside pickup? Those are your two options. I hit curbside pickup when I got there. It says, it tells you, all right, got your order, making your order, your order's ready. And then when you pull up, hit this button that says, I'm here. And then they say, stay in your car. Listen, I get Don't my, move. I get, We're bringing your food out. I get in my, uh, an argument with my wife about this all the time. I love curbside, curbside pickup. pickup. She, lo- she loves to do it at Target, first and foremost. Well, I know, which I'm not, I'm not fully against it because every time... She just orders the stuff and they bring it out to her. It stops her from spending more money going in the store and seeing things that appeal to her. Right. That is a plus. You know, right the, the impulse buys. Yeah. The impulse buys. It does cut down on the impulse buy. So I'm not, I don't, I don't oppose it all that much because it does help out the bottom line. But also she'll call me up and I'll be like on my way home. And she's like, Hey, do me a favor. 
<laughs> like what? Because <laughs> I know what's coming. She goes, "Could you pick up that uh, a pickup order at Target?" And I feel so bad. This person's coming out. They're handing me my groceries. I don't know why you feel they're bad. Like, it's their they're job. Like, if you weren't lazy, if your wife wasn't lazy, this person yeah. wouldn't have a job. So all I, you're doing yeah, is like, you're, you're, they're like, where you're do you want it? And I'm rates. like, I, I, you know what? Just hand it to me. I'll put it in the trunk. Hey, nobody's you know, holding a gun to anybody's head that has to take that job. Listen, you created a job. And I'm teasing you about being lazy. It's convenience. We're busy people. We all have side hustles now because we can't afford to live in JBA. Yeah, you so, know what I'm well, doing? You know what? Sometimes we don't have time to go shopping. So we're going to do, 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 and then bring it out. I'm listening to a podcast while the guy is putting the groceries in the back of the car. I'm, yeah, I'm real busy. I'm sitting in my car. What can I be doing that I'm so busy that I can't get out and help the guy out a little I'm just bit? just saying everybody's busy nowadays. I'm, that's I one reason. I feel so I feel so bad. I feel like it's such a big ask when I, these guys are like, oh, yeah, go ahead. Just put it on the passenger side, uh, uh, the back door. Thanks. All right. Goodbye. Bye. I love the curbside pickup. It's, it's. I feel like I should tip those And people. more really people do. are doing this kind of thing now to avoid delivery charges. And mm-hmm. that's fantastic, you know. And um, But there's a lot of people that I know that their side hustle, they're delivering food, they're delivering groceries. Um Red Robin has started, um, their focus has been to move away from that, the whole curbside pickup, um, and they're they're focusing more on dining-in experiences. I don't know what that means. Like what, when they get a magician come by? Um, I, I have no idea. They call it the family-friendly burger restaurant. You know what's you know great about Red Robin? When you order a refill on your soft drink, your iced tea, they don't take your glass. They bring you a new one, and then they take the old glass away. That's customer service. And they'll bring you more fries. Those the best the best fries fry I've ever had. Steak fries. The best steak mm-hmm. fries I've ever had. Best fries ever. Red Robin. You gotta Loyalty go program. Room. Loyalty program and they're gonna focus on local mm-hmm. marketing. That's what Red Robin's gonna do in order to get back from the whole, you know, what they probably get railed against for, and that's being a nationwide chain. I mean, we grew up in, in the birthplace of Red Robin. In Seattle, and there's only a couple locations, and man, those things were buzzing. Oh, they were popular. I remember the OG. The OG was down on uh, Lake Union and uh, on the Mont Lake Cut there. And my mom's best friend lived right next door in an apartment complex right next door to Red Robin at the, the first location. And man, that place would be hopping oh, so all good. the time. Yeah. Uh, it was it was excellent. It was so fun to go to. Now I think they tore it down and they, they built a uh, apartment building. now the red robins they used to be these big big uh you know restaurants and bars and now they're mm-hmm. i've noticed they've, they've, they've decided to cut them down they're much smaller you'll find them in strip malls and actually malls down in santa maria even though that's a pretty my, good size one my favorite red robin memory is when you got busted for drinking in public for drinking on the porch at a red robin that, that's my favorite red robin memory and um and the fact that you could still speak of red robin in a in a positive light it's something that amazed. It wasn't Red Robin's fault. It was that douchebag's fault. We couldn't do better in life, but manage a Red Robin. Eight zero five five four three thirty six ninety three. Do you ever wonder why it's always somebody else's fault with Jeremy? It's the douchebag. It's the police officer. It's always somebody else's fault. Subscribe to the Jeff and Jeremy podcast now on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, and YouTube. It's your Central Coast commute friendly podcast.